it was like rolling hills and it's just the hills just ignited around went right under my nods like knocked my nods off my helmet pilots were screaming like hey rocket here rocket there pull up you're not going to make it and all of a sudden you just hear explosion she had a suicide vest on my very first kinetic target i was on we go into this for lack of a better word this shithole valley right and we're walking in there and some some bad shit had happened before we even got there. Like one of our, our partner force guys like fell off a cliff that he didn't see because it's dark out. You're walking under night vision. And some bad dudes had taken over this area. They were killing all the other men that like didn't agree with what they agreed with. And I remember I was sitting on this, this ridge with my machine gun and my, my private. And we're watching the operation unfold. And... I, I see this chick, this this female walk out, and she's like, because we got a pretty high elevation, you can see down into the compound. But she walks out, and she's got like an infant and a couple other kids. And this was really like my first exposure to this. You know, the interpreter's trying to talk to her and stuff like that, and then all of a sudden you just hear, just explosion. She she had a suicide vest on. With her kids. Yeah. So her and the kids, she took it all. Yeah, just gone. And like that. I was like, oh. And the interpreter, I'm assuming. Oh, no. They had they had enough standoff that I don't think they got hurt. Um, How far away were you from this? Well, I was a couple hundred meters. But it was like close enough. You could feel the percussion yeah. of the blast. But then like, you know, a firefight ensues because there's bad guys in the house. Right. This is like what starts it off? Yeah, yeah. I kind of kicked everything off. And like, we end up sending the partner force in there. They get into a barricaded shooter situation. And it's just, it ends up being real bad. Anyway, we evac some dudes. We stay there because we can't, we can't get out because it's almost daytime. And if you're walking out in the daytime as an American force in a bad area, like it's not good for you. So we stay there maybe like a day. And then we had to walk like, I want to say like 10K out or something like that, eight to 10K out to meet our helicopter. And they picked us up that night. But that was really my first experience of like, I don't know, war and death, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, but then it got kinetic from there, pretty much. Like every target we went on, there was a gunfight somewhere. The last target we went on, um, it freaked me out because my team leader was freaked out. Hmm. Because it was two weeks before we were going home. And usually that doesn't happen. So they're like, hey, you guys are going to go do this. Be a, a quick one in and out. You guys will be done. Right? And I remember my team leader being like, man, two weeks from home, like, this is not going to be quick. So we go down. And, and if you can, like, what about this operation? Got the spidey senses going. There's just a lot of bad dudes, man. And like where it was geographically, it was on a border of a very bad area between two countries. But there's an area in between those two countries that's pretty much like gangland hmm. or terrorist land that nobody's allowed into besides them, right? So we knew that was there. And we knew we couldn't affect it. So that had everybody on, on you know, the fritz. So we were trying to get in there and get out as, as fast as possible. And you going in there or you going right on the outskirts of this? Like we landed right there. Um, Daytime, nighttime? Nighttime. We do everything. And what, if you can talk about it, what is the point of this particular operation? To capture or terminate a certain individual. Okay. Um, but we get there and it starts off pretty quiet. I was like, man, that's going to be boring. It's not. Because we had another platoon landing at a different location, actioning a target as well. They start fighting. Then all of a sudden, we start fighting. And like, gunshots are going off everywhere. We finally, you know, get through what we needed to get through. We got our guy, made confirmation of it, and then we're like, all right, peace. And we go line up in what's called PZ posture. It's like pickup zone posture. You're pretty much in a line. And we're looking at the border. And I remember I can I can see the sunset to this day. Like I remember the sun was coming up. I was like, damn, like kind of cutting it close. 
And then all of a sudden, like, it was like rolling hills and it's just the hills just ignited. It's like we had vehicles driving up on us, PKMs, dishkas. It was just this giant firefight. And we're just online in the smallest ditch that we can find. How many guys? Uh, there were about 28 of us, 30 of us. Versus who knows what, right? At the time, we didn't know. But knowing now, it was sizable. It wouldn't have been good for us. Um, but luckily, you know, in the later stages of the war, you had a lot of overhead cover. Mm -hmm. Thank God we did. Um, like one of the Apache pilots who was covering us and the people that were coming to get us, like she got some super high level aviation award or something like that because she pretty much sat there in front of all of us and took fire from this mission from this mission yeah so she literally hovered there and was just engaging people. badass man yeah like the balls on her right this was the first time i ever almost got killed um because you know our helicopters come in guns are going everywhere I'm like, oh, this is cool, but this is scary as hell at the same time. Um, but I go to, we go to get up to run onto the aircraft. And then I'm, I'm getting up and grabbing my machine gun and I turn like this. And I remember like seeing my private, Evan. And all of a sudden there's just this hot blast, like right under my nods. Knocks me back on my ass. I'm like, what the fuck is this? It's like Mike Tyson just punched me in the face. Well, I guess a round went right under my nods, like knocked my nods off my helmet. And I'm like trying to like figure out where I am. And I'm just, I come to with my private grabbing me like He-Man. And this dude's like a string bean. He's like six to a buck 50. Mm -hmm. But um, just grabbing me and ripping me up off the ground. Like it was, you know, his job, which it is. Um, then we finally get on the helicopter. We exfil out of there and they got to fly real low to the ground. So you're not an easy target. Uh, it's, and like, I just remember my buddy, he said he plugged into the comms on the bird and he's like, I had to unplug. I'm like, why? He goes, because the pilots were screaming like, Hey, rocket here, rocket there, pull up. You're not going to make it. He's like, <laughs> don't want to hear, hear it. it. That one really stuck with me because even in later deployments, when we get a target that's kind of close to going home, I'm like, yeah, it's just it's just that. that bad heebie-jeebies, man. I yeah. think we get the same, not that it's the same comparison, but in law enforcement, when you know you're on your last year at work, your last month at work, your last week, your last day, it's like, man, if it's going to go wrong. Yeah. So. Like, is it going to be this stuff? Yeah, man, they made it this far. Yeah. But this yeah. is just the end of your first deployment. And yeah. so just, you know, not to gloss over it, you took a round to your nods? So right, right under, like right in front of my face. I just want to clarify, I didn't get shot. Yeah. I thought I did. Um, but it knocked my nods off my helmet. So I can't see and like, it's dark and I'm trying to run on this aircraft. And luckily, like I said, I have my, my private, like pulling me. It's crazy. And guiding me. Um, I'm trying to like carry my machine gun, get my nods on my head and like figure it out. Unfuck myself. Yeah. It, it was rough, man. It really makes you reevaluate yourself. But as a young single guy, like I didn't, I didn't really care about it. Right. Because like what what i die my dad misses out on a son like that sounds bad but like yeah i didn't have yeah. anybody depending on me yeah but uh yeah that's my first deployment and got back and like was promoted to laterally promoted to corporal which allowed me to just mentor more team leaders and like learn more i got more opportunities at leadership positions where i ultimately excelled um and got to do the real job the job that everybody wants to do when they get into Ranger Regiment is be a team leader, mm. mainly an alpha team leader. If you asked me today if I could go back to be an alpha team leader, I would tell you yes, because it was the funnest time of my life. Folks, if you like this video, there's plenty more coming your way. This is just a small excerpt from a much bigger podcast. Link will be in the description below. We'll see you over there.